Greetings and salutations. This is Big J Triple X. Now, if you are familiar with Sticks Hex and Hammer Six Six Six, please check the links um, provided below in the description box. But for this video, I'm going to dissect and deconstruct. Sticks Hexen Hammer 666 argument about his backing the former president of the United States, Donald J. All right, everyone, we start off today talking about the effective launch the other day of Donald Trump's 24 campaign. It's everything but official at this point. Link in the description, not archived because it's RCP. It's just to a video, actually, that Donald Trump posted on Truth Social the other day, hours after the FBI dubiously legally raided the Mar-a-Lago under circumstances that in just 24 hours have gone from a bit on the weird side to outright goddamn fishy and everybody knows it to the point where you've got fucking Andrew Cuomo demanding that the warrant be unsealed. You've got Andrew Yang weighing in basically along similar lines. I'm seeing a significant number actually of even liberal individuals who are at least somewhat uncomfortable with what's going on. Uh, even Mike Pence weighed in and said, well, you know, I'm not so sure that this is helpful. He half-assed it to be true. Um, he knows that he's not going to be re-entering presidential politics. I think he's trying to straddle that line because he wants to have some sort of consulting career, as many uh, former VPs tend to have. Uh, I would like to make a little... Um, a Hadn't it occurred to you that maybe, just maybe, that the Vice President of the United States under Donald Trump knows more about Donald Trump, his behavior, his attitude, more than, than any of you so-called MAGA people. Have y'all ever thought about that? I wonder. I mean, the man is second under he's a, the heartbeat away from the presidency but y'all can't sit there and grasp that idea has that ever got in your head and you know if mike pence does run in 2024 mm, i might shift to to be a republican and might vote for him next a little pitch to people though and that's Donald Trump 2024. Now, uh, if before I leaned towards supporting him, if he ran heavily leaned, of course, I think that he did a good job when he was the president. There was no insurrection. Many of the things that didn't go right during the administration had nothing to do with him. Stop. Stop. So you said it has nothing to do with Donald Trump, you say. You said that the failures during the Trump-Pence administration it has nothing to do with the president himself, you say. Hmm. Okay. I guess. But then again, let's play a couple of clips. And we can't let these weak leaders diminish it. If they had guns in Paris, if five people in that room, Paris and France has probably the toughest gun laws anywhere in the world. And it was like target practice. Come over here, boom. Come over here, boom. People are sitting by the hundreds and many others are gonna be dying. They're sitting in a hospital, in many cases, waiting to die. Now, same thing. A few days ago in California, no guns. 
We didn't have guns. The bad guys had the guns. And these young people, and I tell the press, you got to stop calling them masterminds. These are, these are dirty, rotten scum. These are masterminds. Remember the guy in Paris with the big dirty hat? Remember the guy in Paris, the mastermind. I was watching all the network. I won't mention who, but some of them disgusted me. The mastermind is on the loose. The master. And we have kids that are watching the internet and they want to be masterminds. And then you wonder why do we lose all these kids? They go over there. They're young. They're impressionable. They go over. They want to join ISIS. And we have our anchors. I think I got them mostly stopped. Did you notice that? I don't hear it too much. But they say the young mastermind. Oh, he's brilliant. Young oh, man, he's brilliant. I don't even think he's got a high IQ. I call him in Paris, I called him the guy with the dirty, filthy hat. Okay? Not a smart guy, a dummy. Puts people in there, a mastermind. Bing, bing, bing. They start shooting everybody. You got to be a mastermind. So the press has to be responsible. They're not being responsible. Because we're losing a lot of people because of the internet. And we have to do something. We have to go see Bill Gates and a lot of different people that really understand what's happening. We have to talk to them, maybe in certain areas, closing that internet up in some way. Somebody will say, oh, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. These are foolish people. We have a lot of foolish people. We have a lot of foolish people. We've got to maybe do something with the internet because they are recruiting by the thousands. They're you, you spoke about Mr. President, gun violence restraining orders. And they're called, California actually has a version of this. And uh, I think you, in your meeting with governors earlier this week, individually and, and as a group, we spoke about, um, about states taking steps. But the focus is to literally give families and give local law enforcement additional tools if an individual is reported to be a, a potential danger to themselves or others and allow due process so no one's rights are trampled, but, but the ability to go to court, obtain an order, and then collect not only the firearms, but all, any any weapons in the possession or of that individual. Or take the firearms first and then go to court, because that's another system, because a lot of times by the time you go to court, it takes so long to go to court to get the due process procedures. Uh, I like taking the guns early, like in this crazy man's case, that just took place in Florida. He had a lot of fires. They saw everything. To go to court would have taken a long time. So you could do exactly what you're saying, but take the guns first, go through due process. Uh, not trying. It had to do with obstruction, really, by House Republicans, oddly, more than anything else. Um, we did get an expansion of border protections. They've been debased now under Joe Biden, who at the 11th hour decided to restore some of them. You'll notice that. Uh, we got overhaul on taxes. Um, we got all sorts of goodies when Trump. Wait, wait, wait. Goodies, you say? You said Donald Trump deliver goodies. Well, what sort of goodies? Well, if you go to thehill.com and, and if you talk to the Black Farmers Association, which is a association that does a. Uh, uh, agricultural business for farmers and ranchers in American society. Well, according to uh, Mr. Uh, Vils uh, to these to the Department of Agriculture, they said we saw 99% of the money going to white farmers, 1% going to socially disadvantaged farmers. If you break that down to uh, how much went to black farmers it's 0 0.1 percent look at it the other way the top 10 percent of farmers in the country receive 60 percent of the value of quote unquote not going to tell you the name of the virus but the virus payments and the bottom 10 percent receive a point zero no excuse me Pardon me, a 0.26%. Thank you.
was president. Didn't we certainly didn't have a Ukraine crisis because the Russians actually held off doing what they wanted to do because they understood there was somebody competent in executive leadership. Um, Taiwan was not being surrounded by Chinese war games. North Korea was not rambling about building more nukes. Donald Trump becoming the first president actually to cross the DMZ in the wake of the Korean War all the way back in the 1950s. I think that he did a good job. Was he perfect? No. No. Was he God Emperor? No. Uh, did he do what I would even consider a great job? No. But he did a good job and we haven't seen that in a while. Certainly within my lifespan there has not been another president who did as well as Donald Trump. Don't make me laugh. Really? Well, China, Russia, Iran, and yes, North Korea knew before there was a winner of the 2020 election and they was emboldened by that. So to solely put blame on the, on the current president of the United States is a very flawed and yes, ignorant uh, assumption. Why? Because I, I don't know. I mean, Afghanistan being a, that's bordered to China on its eastern border. The most eastern border is China. On its western border is Iran. And Russia is at its north. And yes, the geopolitical landscape. So without the United States there, of course, it's going to embolden those three countries and, and to less extent of North Korea as well. But, but you forgot about on February the 29th, 2020, um, the agreement to bring peace to Afghanistan between the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, which is not recognized by the United States as a state as known as the Taliban in the United States. February, you know, uh, 29th, 2020. Right, but but it says here at part one under the agreement, it says the United States is committed to withdraw from Afghanistan. All military forces of the United States is allies, coalition partners, including all non diplomatic civilian personnel, private security contractors, trainers, um, advisors supporting services personnel within 14 months following the announcement of this agreement. And we'll take the following measures in this regard. Um, hmm. Um, hammer six, uh, hammer sticks, hexen hammer six, six, six. Um, Joe Biden didn't embolden um anything no well let's be fair biden did but so was trump so for you to make this assumption that it's all on biden's fault when the taliban was actually was invited to camp david under your president our president or our, our former president um during his presidency so therefore you're being mighty disingenuous with that one. Anyway, let's continue. Um, I will vote for him in 2024 if he's the Republican nominee. If he runs, I would vote for him in the primary. Although I suspect again, that if he runs, there won't be a lot of competition and half the states will just shelve their primaries. I would like to see what Donald Trump uninhibited by having to worry about polling and re-election in a second term would do. Um, and if Biden runs again, it would be a, a clear knockout. I don't think there's any way Trump could even lose. I do still see... Are you sure about that? Really, are you sure about that? I mean, uh, I guess we can uh, look at the 2016... Um, presidential election in within the state of Utah and let's look at the results and look at 
this young man who was the third party candidate and he's formally running against Mike Lee right now in the United States Senate election in, in Utah. Mm, you might you might need to um, not be so um, cavalier, if you will. See some black pilling, but I would also like to submit that I'm seeing a a breath of fresh air moment among individuals that are on, if not necessarily Republicans, because I know that I'm not. People who are right now recogni they recognize the Democratic Party is all messed up, so they lean towards supporting in general more Republican candidates. Uh, I like the MAGA candidates generally. And again, not all their views. When they do Jesus, Jesus, it's not something that appeals to me, and I wish they would do that less. But you know, they do have religious constituents. Um, uh, as opposed to the Democrats or the neocons, it's far better. As opposed to what? As opposed to what? Hammer 666. You see, there is a person I would love to um, quote. When fascism comes to America, it will be wrapped in the flag and carrying across. And that's by uh, Sincere Lewis. And it was one of, the, I think he wrote a book called It Can Be You or something like that. I think this happened during the Great Depression when there was a fear of fascism, right wing fascism, like the people who you hang around with um, on Andy Worsley's channel. Um, yeah, uh, there's a fear of people using Christianity. Um, and their former Christianity or their former of a, a desire of an ethno state to, you know, um, to advance this idea um, onto America. So anyway, but then again, I got an example, a great example, what I'm talking about by one of you Trump supporters. So I just have a few questions for you today. First off being, what do you think is the primary focus of the GOP going into 2022? What should it be opposed to what it is it? Oh, wow. That, that's a tough question because there's a lot of things that should be. I think Republicans really need to recognize uh, the people they represent, okay, their voters, not the, not the lobbyist owners, not the corporate PACs, not, not those people. That's not who the Republican Party should represent. Uh, we need to be the party of nationalism, and I'm a Christian, and I say it proudly. We should be Christian nationalists. And when Republicans learn to represent most of the people that vote for them, then we will be the party that continues to grow without having to chase down certain identities or chase down, uh, you know, certain segments of people. We just need to represent Americans, and most Americans, no matter how they vote, really care about the same things. Um, and, and I want to see Republicans actually do their. I think that Donald Trump is gaining a significant amount of support in the last 24 hours. Um, any Trump DeSantis feud appears to have disappeared. <laughs> Doing his emergency EO to force state uh, agencies not to cooperate with the feds is pretty ballsy. Uh, DeSantis, by the way, re re requires some credit for having done so. Even if it's partially symbolic, I mean, some, you know, cooperation can be compelled by the federal government. It's a step in the right direction. You see numerous Republicans finally wising up to the need to abolish the FBI, which was never meant to be permanent, etc., etc., etc. I'll be doing a... So, abolish the FBI. Hmm. Abolish the FBI. You mean, you mean the same FBI that, you know, that gave out uh, federal protection to African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, uh, Americans of a certain um, economic class, um, from and even those from the LGBTQ community, from the tyrannical overreach by certain state governments. Hmm. But I know why you 
doing it. But I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, well, well, Big J, you know, uh, MLK, Martin Luther King, Fred Hampton, Malcolm X, and so other people was was um, uh, was hindered and harassed by the by the Federal Bureau of Investigations. Okay, granted, granted, granted. But what about the I don't know the the 1964 civil rights case where re civil rights workers was di was deleted and buried in a swamp in Mississippi and took the FBI and the United States Navy uh, Navy Corps of engineers to to unravel um, the Ku Klux Klan in the South during that time period. But you didn't want to talk about that. But 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 then again. There, as as what happened to Donald Trump at the at his residence in Florida, y'all were being mighty hypocritical when the African People's Socialist Party headquarters at St. Petersburg, F Florida, same state, same state, was raided. Y'all was slow clapping in the green over that now explain that i'm in hex but hey come on you just want to abolish the fbi and the federal government because because your lord and savior donald j trump can't do no wrong you actually believe that anyway let's keep it moving a little bit on that as well later don't just abolish the fbi get rid of the whole alphabet soup bureaucracy most of these agencies don't even hold any significant function it's like uh the democrats will ramble about how evil it is that trump is optioning the concept of getting rid of the department of education see he hates education no our educational rate was great when the states were controlling it before the d uh, doa did anything significant we had a world-class educational system back when we focused on actually educating people instead of becoming uh, a taxpayer-funded fucking daycare. Uh, that's the whole problem. There is an article by uh, dcbpp.org, and it's about the research where it shows that state governments don't spend money on education, they rather spent money on penal issues. So, what Hammer Six Six said that the education um, system was better before the Department of Education um, between 1979 or before um, the 1953, um, 1954, I should say, um, is a very um, um, how can I say it? is mighty disingenuous. So here are the charts. Have at them. I think that Trump should run. I think that Trump, if, if anyone tries to stop him from being nominee, they're crazy and it probably doesn't work. I do not expect him to be in a jail cell, pooping his pants, rolling around, big fat baby, diapers, all this hyperbolic shit that we see from the Democrats. Even if he's charged, I'll vote for him. Hell, if he is in a jail cell, I'll, uh, I'll vote other. I'll vote Donald Trump anyway. The Republicans would be nuts not to defend him, by the way. There's, uh, clearly, he did nothing wrong. He's been investigated in and out for a fucking half decade. What more do you want? What more evidence do we want that Donald Trump actually is what he says that he is, and he actually is attempting to repulse elements of the WEF sort of deep state thing? He's constantly censored. Oh, under the most spurious of circumstances, even liberals know this. There was no insurrection on January 6th doesn't exist. The coup is right now. What you're seeing right now with the Mar-a-Lago raid and other things going on, the IRS being expanded explicitly to attack political dissidents, this is the coup. This is the insurrection. You know, you know, I'm not going to uh, dignify that with a response. I'll just let the images from 
international news as well as our our troubled domestic news showing, I let y'all be the judge of that, but I'm not going to dignify that response. Y'all have at it. There's snowflakes! I got new snowflakes. Is that snowflake? No, guys. A teacher. He was a teacher. It's not what any of a fiery but mostly peaceful protest in which the only person killed was a protester isn't exactly an overthrow of the U.S. government. And the government is colluding with corporations and banks and other groups to grind down people that are critical of them. And that's because MAGA unleashed a hellstorm of people who no longer, uh, trying to control them with the id poll thing by simply saying that their views were extreme, and so they would generally shut up because, oh my god, I'll lose my job if I'm labeled an extremist, so I better not have this opinion in public. That stopped working. And hmm. You're right. Government colluding with corporations. That's a bad thing. That's a bad thing. As if... Donald Trump didn't use the city of New York, didn't use the state of New York, didn't use this any locality of New Jersey or any other state of the union to use public domain laws to remove people from their houses and destroy public property. But yet you call yourself a libertarian, a conservative, what may have you. Get out of here with that. That, that right there is just an insult to everybody's intelligence. You gotta be better than that, uh, uh, Sticks. In life, you have a thing called condemnation, and cities have the right to condemn for the good of a city, whether it's New York, whether it's Los Angeles, whether it's any other place. Atlantic City is one of those cities, and it's got the right to condemn. In the 1990s, Donald Trump was behind an outrageous case of eminent domain abuse. Vera Koking was an elderly widow who lived for decades in her home beside Atlantic City's boardwalk. She loved that home. And Donald Trump wanted Vera's home so he could put in limousine parking for his casino across the street. Everybody coming into Atlantic City sees that property. And it's not fair to Atlantic City and the people. They're staring at this terrible house instead of staring at beautiful fountains and beautiful other things that would be good. You're bullying these people out because not, they're... Excuse me, that's wrong. But for you to use the word bully, John, is very unfair. This is a government case. This is not Donald Trump. Yes, it's Donald Trump. It's you and your cronies in government working together. For you to call these people cronies is very unfair. To be calling good public servants cronies. An unaccountable state agency tried to condemn Vera Koking's property and transfer it to Donald Trump. He convinced the government officials to use their eminent domain power to take Vera's home. This was public power but used for private gain. We have been so nice to this woman. I offered her a lot of money out of this, a little thing called heart. Heart, he doesn't have no heart, that man. The only thing he has is what he's worried about himself. Basic to freedom is that if you own something, it's yours, that the government doesn't just come and take it away from you. Do you want to live in a city where you can't build schools? Do you want to live in a city where you can't build roads or highways or, or have access to hospitals? Condemnation is a necessary evil. But you're not talking about a hospital. You're talking about a building a rich guy finds ugly. Across the country, land-hungry developers have teamed up with tax-hungry politicians to bulldoze people's homes and businesses on the mere possibility that the new, wealthier businesses will generate more jobs or more taxes. It is time to end this kind of abuse. 
represented by the Institute for Justice, Vera beat Donald Trump and saved her home. If there is justice, then they would have never done to me what they're doing. I want to see justice in here. Prevent himself from being put in a jail cell, which would be very funny, and it wouldn't be true because he clearly intended to run anyway all this time. Uh, but they will chalk it up to that anyway. Um, yes, uh, it's it's time for MAGA again. Uh, yes, you can ramble about all these other candidates that you want. If Trump does stand down and decides not to run, I'm sure that he will mint a successor, and that person will be the default, unless they totally suck. Unless he hires another Pompeo or Mattis sort of person uh, for his uh, runner-up position, in which case then we have to have a big discussion about the future trajectory of politics. Uh, right now, though, uh, there's nobody, nobody uh, as far as the slew of people who potentially will run, other than Pence, and even he's half-walking it. There's nobody who's not defending Donald Trump at the moment. A private citizen is being harassed at taxpayer expense by the U.S. government under dubious and spurious circumstances over things that in some cases have been effectively debunked. Um, the National Archive story is horseshit. We're not even 100% sure that's the only reason the FBI was there. I think it's a fishing expedition and they probably wiretapped the entire Mar-a-Lago when they were there. Thankfully, it doesn't look like Trump's people were willing to turn off the security cameras, so hopefully they caught him in the act and put that out on Rumble or something like that. Wouldn't that be a sight to be... A former president, a private citizen, do tell. Since when a former president of the United States a private citizen you gotta explain this uh, argument um, sticks you gotta explain this argument H hammer six six see you know I think though because you mentioned that public money is used to to go at a in quotation marks a private citizen when that private citizen quote unquote is is funding is funded his protection by the secret service by the local government the authorities and also his lifestyle is also um uphold by the united states treasury Former presidents have a lot of privileges, and and very and uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, privilege, privileges and, and honors to go with it. So for you to sit there and make Donald Trump ass his innocent little man, you are just a sycophant. <laughs> yeah, you know, so your whole video is can be i deconstruct your whole entire video your argument don't have no legs and you and others are a well let me be fair i'll be fair i'll be fair trumpism is is just as a threat if not more than wokeism. You see, wokeism on one hand, wokeism on one hand, is trying to silence um, and radically change society through, through changing of definition of words and try to uproot certain traditions. Trumpism, on the other hand, is a threat to the republic and our democratic institutions. At, and January 6th is a very example of the threat to our democratic institutions and our republic because y'all tried to stop a constitutional um 
act. So, therefore, your whole video has been deconstructed. And I wish a challenge to anybody, including you, Hammer, to deconstruct me. But I doubt that. But I got videos coming down the pike. I'm going to roll the credits on this. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. I'm out.